morning, church. Why don't you stand your feet with us today? It's great that every week that goes by, we see more and more faces in this room as society just opens up. If you're watching from home still, we'd encourage you to uh, go to that little share option on your browser and share because there are people that you influence in your world that need to see what's going on here this morning. But before we get started, we just want to uh, do what we always do and set some things in order, amen? Because our week, things get down downloaded into our lives all throughout the week. And sometimes we're better at filtering out, filtering out things that shouldn't be there, things that have influence, things that might direct the odd occasional footstep that we take. But before we get started here this morning, right now, Lord God, we just want to unload all these things that would distract, all those things, the situations, Lord God, that would take our attention and our focus off of you. As we heard in the 9 a.m. service, Lord God, you're just, you've hidden things, not from us, but for us. And as we're in this time here this morning, Lord God, we're just thankful that you're revealing more of who you are, what you've been doing, what you have in store, Lord God. And Father, we don't want to let another moment go by without us grabbing hold of everything that you have for us here this morning. So Father, we just set aside the distraction. We set aside the voices, Lord God, that aren't from you. And Father, we focus our attention on the King of glory in this room. Lord God, we just give you the praise. We're here to give you some glory. We're here to give you one in Jesus' name. Come on.
aren't you thankful for his love today, for his goodness? I'm thankful today that in this place that we don't have to wait. We can live an abundant life right here and right now because of what he did for us. Amen. Come on, let's just worship him this morning. Give him all our praise and honor. We pray for the mountains to move. We pray for the oceans to part. We pray for a miracle in our hearts, in our hearts. No need to hide back in the grave. No need to hold back any song. We can come now full of faith. It's what you've promised. It's what you've promised. We believe it's already done. Every battle's already won. It is finished. It is
God, we believe it today. We believe that you've won it all just for us. Come on, if you believe that, can you just raise your hands to the King of glory this morning? Oh, we thank you, Lord. If you know this, sing it out with me this morning. You're worthy of every song we could ever sing. You're worthy of all the praise we could ever bring. Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe. We live for you. We live for you. Sing Jesus. Jesus, the name above every other name. Jesus, the only one who could ever say. You're worthy of every breath that we could ever breathe. And we live for you. Oh, we live for you. Come on, sing for
Hebrews chapter 3 says, Be careful then, dear brothers and sisters. Make sure that your own hearts are not evil and unbelieving, turning you away from the living God. You must warn each other every day while it's still today. Say today. While it's still today so that none of you will be deceived by sin and hardened against God. It goes on to say today when you hear his voice, don't harden your hearts as they did in the rebellion. I just want to encourage everybody this morning that I feel such a prompting of the Lord that we be very, very present in believing. We are being overwhelmed and inundated every day talking about what's going to happen in the future. In two weeks, this will open or that will open. And in uh, the fall, we'll be able to do things this way and that way and whatever. And the Lord says, I, I just feel the stirring of the Lord that says, today, today, the kingdom is not closed. The kingdom is not waiting. The kingdom is not furloughed. Are you with me? He says, be present today. There's things that the Lord is speaking to you today. And he says, if you hear my voice, I need you not off somewhere two weeks in the future. I need you not off somewhere dividing how you're going to work this out or figure that out. I need to be able to speak into you today and see you move in a way that releases him into the kingdom. Are you with me? If you could, just close your eyes and open your hands to the Lord right now. The kingdom is right now. It's today. Right now, he's speaking into you. Right now, he's stirring you up with prayers to pray, with things to move out of the way, things to step forward into. Right now, today, he's doing that. As you're listening right now, I just want to encourage you. There was a, a prophet that just spoke to me just a few minutes ago that said he saw, he had a dream. There was a, a whole thing of anointing oil that was thrown into the trash. And when it went into the trash, it did not break. It did not break. And the Lord woke him up and stirred him up with this. That you think that some things have been on the shelf. And you know what? Some things have been on the shelf for too long in your life. And he says it's not broken. It's not something that you have to resurge or restart. It's something that is present with you today. The Lord has anointed your voice to pray. He has anointed your life to worship. He has anointed your heart to be a breaker for other people. Let it be stirred in you right now as you begin to pray. Can you begin to intercede around for the people around you right now? Lord, what you want to do in this room today, we're just saying today. Some people say, well, gosh, when's the church going to become normal again? When are we going to get back to normal? Guess what? It's today. It's today. It's today. The Lord is stirring you right now, and if you'll step in, guess what? The minute you step in, the church is activated. If you've got issues in your physical body right now, I just want you to wave at me. Wave at me. If you've got issues in your physical body, you need the Lord to move in. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Aren't you glad, as you wave those hands to me, aren't you glad that the kingdom is not for us sometime, it's today. And so in the name of Jesus, I release healing over these that have waved their hand. They, in the act of waving, they've said, I believe it's today. I believe it's today. So I just release that power. I release that life that you purchased at the cross, Lord. I say it be effective right now. Let healing begin to manifest in these bodies. Even as we pray right now, healing manifest in Jesus' name. Healing manifest in Jesus' name. To those that are divided going, I don't know what to do. There's so many like that right now in this room, right? I don't know what to do next. I thank you, Father, for clarity of vision emerging and manifesting in their life right now. In this place, now that we've cut off Sunday and we've said today, I, some people are going to have a just a opening of their eyes. And, they go, and you go, oh my gosh, why didn't I think of that? It's because sometimes you have to activate yourself and say today, today, today. 
So, Father, begin to open up eyes right now. Lord, thank you for the healing in those bodies. Thank you for the healing in those bodies. Somebody with a lower back. Somebody with a lower back. Wave your hand if you got issues in your lower back right now. Yay. Father, in the name of Jesus, I command that lower back pain to go. Command that lower back pain to leave right now. Dissipate right now in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father. If that lower back pain was you, I just want you to move around a little bit. See what that feels like. See what the Lord's doing in your back. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Healing all over the room. Activation all over the room. Eyes opened all over the room. Amen. Amen. Let's celebrate the Lord right now. Give your hand a hand and clap right now. Father, we worship you. And we say we're here today. We're here today. Holy, there is no one. that you're glad to be with them. <laughs> Are you glad to be in the house of the Lord? Oh, it feels so good to be here. It's good to be together. Amen. Oh, my goodness. I'm so excited about what God's doing. That is probably one of my favorite songs that we do. Because in the midst of chaos, in the midst of just things going upside down, it's so amazing to know that you can build your life on a firm foundation. And it's such a great thing. I'm so glad you guys are here this morning. All the little guys are here too as well. We're glad that everyone's here. Oh, there's so many awesome. I like having the, the younger ones. I'm not going to say little because many of them are not little. It's so good to have you all though. Even our children's ministry, I know we've got a lot of announcements that are coming up. Make sure that you mark June 7th on your calendar because that is when we're going to be opening back up our nursery, early childhood, our kids' church. It's going to be absolutely incredible. So mark that on your calendar. If you have a little one, I want to say right now to all you moms out there, I was the product of being uh, like in the middle of church, my mom having to bring 50 billion things in a bag to keep me quiet. <laughs> Y'all know what I'm talking about. And I'm the one that was, I was, believe it or not, I was actually probably more noisy trying to get me to be quiet. Believe that one if you want to. <laughs> but I want to tell you moms, it's, we're just glad that the, your kids are here this morning. We're just glad they're here. Let them draw. Let them have a good time. Now, in, on the 7th, we want you to continue to bring them because on the 7th, then they get their own service in children's church and early childhood. Our team, I'm telling you, they do a fantastic job. So they've got their own service that they get to. If you're a visitor or maybe you're newer and you've been bringing your kids, I want to encourage you, keep bringing them because we've got a lot of great things going to be relaunching and reopening here very soon. Um, before Pastor Kevin comes to preach, though, we do want to take care of a few different things. We want to tell you about some stuff. We want to receive our tithe and offering this morning. We're going to do it a little bit differently. We are not necessarily going to pass a basket. We're going to do it digitally. Um, you can still text GIVE. The number is 84321. 
And then as you leave today, we have baskets beside of the door that you can drop off. If you're writing a check, make it payable to ECH. You can drop it off there at the door. But then also with this text giving, it's very secure. Uh, many of you all through this pandemic actually begin to give this way specifically. It's very secure. No, uh, you never have to worry about your information getting shared with anybody. But all you do if you've never done it before is if you open up a text message to, and whoever you're going to send it to, you type in the number 84321 in the two box, the recipient, and then in the message body, you go ahead and type the numerical value of what you'd like to give. When you hit send, it just pops up a link real quick. Fill out that information. Make sure you hit the logo that says Expression Church. Very secure. And then if you've done it before, you don't have to do all that again. That's just for the first time users there. So that's a great way to give. Um, you can still give via those uh, tithing baskets at the, at the exit this afternoon. And then I'm so thankful to be a part of a body that's so generous and has a heart of hospitality. There's so many great things that are coming up that we're talking about, but it would not be possible if we did not have a family of generous people and hospitable people. There's a big difference between just, because this is not a tip. This isn't something that, well, that was good, I'll give. No, this is a principle that God has placed inside and we believe as a biblical principle that tithing is a seed that is being sown to see a reward and to see a greater increase not just a reward but an increase bigger than what we all could ever do individually but he takes it and he just explodes it and it becomes so much more so I want to encourage you today whether you're you're first starting into the tithe uh, tithe means tenth and that's completely up to you how you'd like to look at your income and your finances. We encourage you, though. I know for myself personally, and I speak this for me and my family, that we began with a tenth, and we felt that that's what God has called us to. And then as the Lord has led us, we have asked God to continue to expand us even more to where it, that might be an entry point, but then there might be even more that God's calling us to give into. So search that out for yourself and your family. And right now, let's bless our offering as we get ready to receive it digitally as well as maybe you're preparing that as well. So let's pray. Father, I thank you so much, Lord, for who you are. God, we come in this moment and we say thank you, God, that you build us even when we can't build ourselves. And God, in moments whenever we have found ourselves, Lord, in just a little bit of uncertainty, you still are a firm foundation for our feet to walk on. So God, today we thank you. And we've brought, Lord, into this storehouse, the one that you've called us to steward. God, we've, we've brought our offerings, our tithe, everything into this storehouse. And God, we say, it's all yours. My pocketbook, my checkbook is yours, God. You do with it what you see fit through my hands. We thank you, God, for what you're going to do, but Lord, what you've already done. We bless you today in Jesus' name. And all God's people said, amen and amen. Well, I want to tell you about a couple things, and then Pastor Kevin is going to come. How many of you all were at the drive-in movie this past Friday night? Yeah! Well, I want to encourage you, keep an eye out. That will be the first of many. It, our team does such amazing things, and I don't want to mention all names, but they did phenomenal. It was absolutely incredible, and it was such a great thing to be a part of a house of hospitality because we were able to offer that completely just for free. Give away the popcorn, give away the movie. It was awesome. So we're going to be doing those in the summertime, so keep an eye out. Invite your friends. We're going to try our best to even, we're trying to find a bigger screen. We've already heard many people say, put one on the whole side of the building. Believe me, we are going to try. So I don't know what it looks like, but we're going to try something. So make sure you check those things out but tonight at 7 30 expression student ministries if you don't know who those pastors are that's pastor michael pastor bridget yes 7 30 middle schoolers and high schoolers are going to have a campfire cookout tonight 7 30 if you have a middle schooler or a high schooler get them here I'm telling you because it's a lot of fun. They're going to have a great time together. They're going to be outside doing some really cool stuff. So I encourage you, if you've got an introverted young person, twist their arm and get them here. Bribe them to get them here because once they get connected, it's going to be absolutely incredible what God deposits in them through the leadership of this team. So I want to tell you about that at 730 tonight. 
And then also today, um, before Pastor Kevin comes, how many of you all, I know that summertime, I mean, it's Memorial Day weekend, but many times we tend to have a, a tendency to forget as we're having cookouts and all those things. We have a tendency to forget what today or what Memorial Day weekend actually is about. And it is to remember those who have fought for our country and gave their lives for our country. And if you're in here today, we'd love to honor you and thank you for your service. If you've served in the military, uh, could you please stand to your feet this morning and let us give honor to you and thank you so much. Yeah, thank you. We are so grateful for you all. Yes, Memorial Day weekend typically kicks off our summer and uh, we're going to be doing more of the movies, I'm sure, uh, getting, right, getting the right titles for finding the right movies and the big screen. Uh, but it was a lot of fun Friday evening. And um, it's not a typical summer at this point because we're coming through this whole pandemic situation. It's changed a lot of things. In fact, I'm looking forward to sports again. Can I get an amen? amen. Do you know how hard it is sitting there watching the, the TV show? And Lisa comes and says, hey, can you take this out or do that? And before, I'd always be able to say, can you wait to time out? Can, you, can we wait to, how about a half time? It's just, in good conscience, I can't stop and say, hang on a second. I'm watching the 2004 Spelling Bee Championship. <laughs> it just, something just won't settle right. So I just have to get up and do it. So it just don't work for us. So just come on football. Come on basketball. Come on baseball, all of them. Racing started, no fans, but at least we got something fresh, right? I'm not a big NASCAR guy as much as many people are around here, but gosh, I find myself just looking forward to the next one. So here we go. But I think we're getting closer. Um, next weekend is Pentecost Sunday, so we're, I want you to come prepared and expecting. We're going to do some wonderful things. It is our, our last week that... Um, in a typical Sunday service that all of our young people, middle school and high school, will be together uh, because the following Sunday, we have purchased a building across the street. There's about a little over 10,000 square feet that the youth will take uh, and already have take possession June 1st, and we've had been meeting over there. So they're going to have their own services on Sunday morning uh, starting June 7th. You'll hear more about that. There'll be a big rally. But next week, what I'd like to do, I haven't even mentioned this. just hit me back there just a few moments ago. What I'd like to do is... Um, next Sunday, we probably won't be able to, able to lay hands on them, but I'd like to pray over all of our middle school and um, high school kids um, next Sunday as it'll be. Now, we'll have, they'll be coming back periodically, maybe every quarter or a minimum of every quarter, where we'll all have a big service on Sunday morning together, and they'll blend in with some of our stuff. Uh, I saw Kenyon worshiping this morning, and you're just not going to be able to do that over by your, with that group, not us not be able to experience it some, all right? So it's just going to have to happen some. So we got to figure out a way to make that all work. But we're excited for them. Uh, they'll have, you know, activities to be placed for basketball. Those goals will be leaving here probably within a few weeks after 7th. Um, those were in the Henderson Center. And uh, Marshall gave them to us. And we've been tempting our kids with them for about a year and a half. They've hung on them. And they've done, there's been many dunks that have happened back there um, at, at ground level. So we'll see what happens when we get them over there. Um, so it's a lot of good things that are happening. We're excited about that for the young people. They'll be able to do their own thing, have the worship, have their band. Have the, a lot of things are just going to be developed. And our kids launching back, relaunching on the 7th of June as well, early childhood, um, nursery. Um, what else am I missing? That's, hmm? Oh, yes, yes, I will say that. Um, on that Sunday, the 7th too, which will be the first day everything kind of opens back up, what we're going to do immediately after the 11 o'clock service um, is to, we're going to grill out, out back, out front, whatever that is out here, uh, under the port by the portico side, where p the youth and the, the, the church can come together. So right at the end of the 11 o'clock service, there will be, you know, hot dogs, hamburgers, steak, no, I'm just kidding, that's, <laughs> not steaks, uh, unless you bring your own, we'll, we'll, we'll cook them up for you real quick. But really, we're going to have a cookout, barbecue, I'm sure we can get ghostly gourmet, uh, barbecue sauce here to work with us as well. So we'll we're gonna have a, it'll be outside, so it'll be very open and very, a lot of area. So you can you'll be more socially distanced out there than you will be in here by that time. So uh, 
we just want you to stay, stick around for just a few minutes. Kaylee is also having her graduation party that day in the cafe. She is graduating from Midland. I saw you in the parade. And uh, so my daughter, Lakin, also is graduating. We have several that are graduating, so we're going to sometime soon uh, celebrate them uh, as well. So uh, it's unfortunate that the whole senior year, the last part of the senior year, was kind of taken from you. Uh, but uh, the Lord knows how to redeem all that. Somehow uh, you won't maybe experience that, but there will be other areas of life that uh, I never got a parade. <laughs> all right, just say, I, I never got to sit on a float. Uh, I, I was the one chasing the float in the middle of the parade. I wasn't, wasn't sitting on one. So you, that, that was a real remarkable thing that Barbersville did. Uh, for uh, the kids, uh, Midland, through Bar City of Barbersville Friday night. So uh, I want to commend uh, the mayor up there and all the, the school administrators for making that possible because I, that really could turn into something even with the real graduation and commencement ceremony and all there. That, that, would really, that was really a good thing. So uh, kind of enjoyed it. So anything we can do to creatively help celebrate our young people. We've got you little ones graduating from preschool that didn't get a preschool graduation. That's a big deal for kids going into kindergarten. Uh, you know, there's just a lot of things that the kids didn't get experience this year. But we're going to do everything we can in our power uh, on Sundays and Wednesdays when they're here to um, help celebrate and raise the kids. And we'll be doing some things real soon to get the kids back up in front of the plat on the platform in front of you all so they can uh, be celebrated as well. One of the biggest things that people deal with uh, as they get older is crowds, standing up and talking in front of people or singing in front of people or dancing or whatever they do in front of from people. But we work really, really hard of, of kind of breaking down that stigma um, at the very early age. If we can keep people in front of, little ones in front, they grow up, they don't know any better that people are watching them, you know. Because uh, when you get older, you, you sometimes get a little struck, you know, stage fright and you get afraid of people. And we're trying to uh, raise kids up to where they're not so intimidated and they just expect to be pre presenting or talking in front of people and making presentations because you never know what the Lord has in store for their life. Amen? Yeah. So a lot of stuff going on, but it's all good. Are you ready for the word this morning? Amen. Let me take about, uh, about 20 minutes. And uh, well, I'll take the first 20 minutes. And the next 20 minutes, we'll do something different. I'm just kidding. We're just going to just take the 20 minutes. Did you know... The Bible says that it, in Proverbs, Solomon wrote, it is the glory of God to conceal a matter, to hide it. It is the honor of kings to search it out. It's the, uh, the glory of God to conceal it, to hide it. It is the honor of kings to search it out. The king of kings is Jesus the Lord. Amen? Amen? He is the king of the kings. Guess who the kings are that he is the king over? You and me. We're not talking about the kings of, of, of nations only. We're talking about the king of kings. You all and I in, that are born into the kingdom are, are clarified and, and talked about in the Bible and mentioned in the Bible and called in the Bible kings. He's the Lord of lords. That means you're the Lord of your domain, but he is your Lord. You are the king. He is the king over you, but you're the king of your domain. So that's what the Bible talks about. So it is the glory of God to conceal it, to hide it. It is the honor of us to search it out. God is not hiding it from you. He's hiding it for you. There's a major difference. If you become suspect of God and you think God is up on his throne, sitting somewhere high and lifted up, like the scripture says, and you're down here and God's moving your life as a chess match, and, and he's moving it around hoping you make the right choice here, the right choice there, and, and you're going, oh God, now what? And it's like, like you're playing a game with a, a, an animal, but you're just leading him around. That's not how God works. God's desire for you is even greater than you have a desire for your life. His ways for us his promises for us, his, his pleasures for us are so good that we ourselves, in all of our dreaming and all of our visions that we have for our lives and our families and for our kids and for all of our fans, friends and family, the biggest dream you could possibly imagine, the greatest plans you could possibly have, God's plan is still better. And he doesn't hide it from you. He's not moving around a corner hoping you don't find him. No, God is hiding it for you. And here's how this works. What happens is, when we become in an agreement with God, 
and we begin to trust God fully, which means, God, I believe that those promises that you have for me, that you, that you said in your Bible, are written for me, and Lord, I believe you're wanting those to happen in my life. Amen. Then we become in agreement with those promises. So the more you study the word, the more you understand the word, the more you real, read the promises of the word, you realize that God has made us and given us an inheritance that's given from him, and the word is our, our will and testament that we are able to open up and read and see the promises and the inheritance that we have. God, we're a joint heir with Jesus and an heir of God. So those promises that are in that word are for us. They're not hidden from us. The enemy, the devil, the Satan, the flesh, remember I talked about last week, is, is an enmity to your heart, your spirit. So the spirit of God and the, your flesh and the devil are an enmity working against you to try to keep you from attaining and accomplishing and fulfilling those promises. He does not want you to inherit what you've really truly been blessed to inherit. And the reason that we are able to inherit it is because God himself came down in form of man and Jesus took on the form of man and died. And when Jesus died, he became the testator to the New Testament and the new will. So now the will and the scroll of the Bible is open to us and the promises are open to us because the will has been read and, and the ex executor of the estate is Jesus. And now all the promises of God, all of the execution of the will are not for future, they're for now because the will has been opened. Yeah. The man that was able to die to give us that inheritance died. And because he died, the will has been opened and the Bible now is our new will, our, in, our testament, the reading of the will, the reading of the promises and everything in that Bible is an inheritance to you and to me. When we become agree, agreement, come in agreement with that, and we look at God and say, okay, God, I believe you want that, then when I need healing in my body, or I need peace of my mind, or I need a situation changed in my, in my life, and I know it's a promise, I don't have to look at God and say, God, are you going to do that for me? I know God is not only able, I know God is willing. Why is he willing? Because he already promised it in his will. Yeah. That is his will. He is willing, and what he's done for one, he will do for you. Right? As long as I see him in agreement, then all I have to do is fight everything that's in the way between what he and I agree on. Yeah. Most of my prayers have always been in times past, I shouldn't say recently, because I'm learning as I mature, and I, I'm hoping you guys are doing the same thing. I find myself in times when I'm praying to God, trying to convince him on something that I want, right? Right? And if it doesn't happen fast or quick or as way, the way I thought it should happen, I look at him and I go, okay, God, what, what, what can I do to convince you? And I put it back on human effort. Yeah. And then I'm going, well, it has to be something I'm doing. So, God, I got I to do it better. Hoping that God one day will get pleased enough with me to answer the prayer that I'm petitioning him for. That's not how this works. Amen. The only thing that pleases God is faith. If the promises are in the word, it's already his will. I don't have to go to him and say, all right, God, I got this situation. Lord, I, I got this ache in my back. Or, Lord, I got this, I'm trying to change this person. Or this one's in a rebellion. Or this kid's got to change. Or, and and I, I go to him and try to convince. I go to him to, because I'm coming in agreement with his will. And when I come in agreement with his will, he and I are working together now to see that thing come to pass, and anything that comes in the way, we stay connected together because what comes in the way to stop it from happening, we move out of the way. And we move it out of the way by faith. Are you with me? So now that we've established that God is hiding things for you, not from you, and that God wants us in agreement with his will, and the will has already been opened Remember, the lamb was the only one that could open the book. So the will has been opened. And now that the will is opened, the more you read the will, the more you realize what inheritance that you have in your life. Am I making sense? Now let's read Ecclesiastes, Ecclesiastes chapter 3. I have seen the travail, that part I didn't know about, which God hath given to the sons of men to be exercised in. Two words here 
are action words. I have seen the travail. Travail is labor. Travail is pressing in. I got a promise from the Lord. I'm coming in agreement with it, but I don't see it come to pass. The temptation that I have is to work it. The temptation I have is to put it back on me and say, okay, God, I've got to adjust my chess match a little bit to get you to keep pleasing with me. I have to travail and labor against getting into works. I am laboring and travailing to staying in his rest. The children of Israel were coming through the wilderness. The Bible says in Hebrews, Ronnie read part of it this morning, when the children, came through, uh, children of Israel came through Egypt or from Egypt into the wilderness, Hebrews says they could not enter into the promises of God, which is the will, because of their unbelief. They rebelled. How did they rebel? They labored but never entered into the rest. Because they labored, they never mixed faith with their actions. It always was on how good or how bad they were doing. Or they'd put it back on God and say, God, you better do something here. If you don't do it, it ain't going to happen. I'm just going to stand right here and wait on you. And the Lord says, you got to move. There's got to be some action. There's got to be some function. This is a, faith is a verb. You travail. Sometimes you're battling on not putting your hand on it. Other times you're battling on pushing it too far. And the only way you're going to know to do that is to, to, to always remember you're in agreement with God because the minute you, the test in your head has to be this. The test in your head has to be this. You have to be able to say, how much of this am I doing or my actions or my travailing is because I'm trying to get God to do something? And how much of it is trying to get my mind under control and lining up with the fact that God already wants to do it? If you need, let me give you an example. Let's say you need healing in your body. And, and, and you're going, God, I need you to heal me. I need you to heal me. And I know it's a part of the promises. I know it's a problem. I know it. And God, I, I have to have this happen. And you're looking at God saying, God, what do I need to do for you to heal me? And then the more you put it on your physical flesh to do something, you miss the whole point of agreement because you think God is trying to get you to do something to please him. God is already pleased with you if you believe him. There's nothing you can do physically to please him. The only thing you do physically is because you're coming from a place of already pleasing him. I believe you, God. Let's go. And then I have a partner in this thing, not me performing to get him to approve. You get that? There's a huge difference when you're here because, I mean... If God tells me to jump, run circles or flip circles, I'm going to flip a flip-flop. Why? Because he told me to do that. And then I'm going to say to him, I hope you're happy now. Because that did, what did that do? What did, what did, it didn't do anything. God wants you to believe him. He wants you to believe his promises and his will is for you. And those inheritance, the, the, you're an heir, all those things are for you. And God is saying, listen, I want you to have happiness in your life. I want you to have joy in your life. Now let's read it. I have this seen the travail. Let's go back one second. I have seen the travail which God hath given the sons to men to be. This is a hard word. Exercise it. That means you have to continually stay in action and working of your faith. Not working to prove your faith, but works from your faith. And the, when, listen, if God heals you before or does something for it, comes through for you before, and he comes through and you go, man, God, thank you, you build up a muscle in faith. Yeah. Yeah. You have a confidence in faith because yeah. you know he did it before, he's going to do it again. Mm -hmm. And then you, learn, you, you build up a tolerance. Why? Because the enemy is trying everything he can to stop the promises, and he can't stop them. All he can do is deter you from going about getting and receiving them because God already has them written in your heart. You're going to see that. Watch this, next verse. He hath made everything beautiful. Oh, this is the part I didn't like in his time. I, I would rather that say, he hath made everything beautiful in my time. Right? I like it when, I like it, when it just kind of works out just the way I thought it should work out. It just makes sense to me. And sometimes I have to get God to the side and say, listen, let me just, there's probably some information you don't have that I am aware of. So let me just kind of give you all the pieces that are here. In case you're wondering, Lord, um, 
Yeah, you see, I didn't think you were thinking about that. But let me fill you in. And I don't know if you heard me the first time because you act like you're ignoring me right now. But I'm telling you, and just to, to remind you, almighty oh God, you know, and then I'm making a joke about it, but that's the truth. That's how we act. We go around and we say, okay, God, you, in case you didn't know, I'm feeling some pressure. In case you didn't know, th those kids aren't changing. In case you didn't know, they're getting older and I, I'm seeing some things I don't like and I want to see some, in case you, Lord, you're going to have to do, he, he, Lord, you get his attention because I've done everything I can to get his attention. But Lord, don't do it the way I think you would do it because if you're going to do it that way, it's going to be too hard on him. I want you to do it soft. <laughs> Am I talking to anybody? That's what we do. We, we, so we want to help him along and really always want to look at, just agree. Because when you agree and you travail, and I mean travail, and I, I can tell you what that word travail is, but I'm not going to do it today because we've got kids in here. That word travail is a Greek, Hebrew word that means cut the flesh. Okay? It's laboring in. Huh. Everything in beautiful in his time. It's in his time. Here's the beautiful part about this, though, in his time. When it comes... When it happens, you do not have to have fingerprints on it. You do not have to have, uh, you're blowing your breath on it. You don't have to sweat on it. It comes and it's, it's beautiful. It's full of joy. It's full of peace. And you look at it and say, there is no way in the world I could have made that happen on my own. There is no way. You can't take the blame because you can't take the credit. And the Lord wants you to be amazed by him. He wants you to be uh, in awe of him. He wants you to go, I am so amazed. Why? He desires to reveal the things he has hidden for you. And then when the, the, the king in you sees it, discovers it, it will blow your mind to think how good he is for you. When you see him do things for you that you can't do for yourself, and you're thinking all along, why was I even worried over that? Why was I even concerned? Why was I even concerned? And then the older you get, the more mature you get when you walk with him, you begin to see he starts taking you on journeys that you didn't know he was going to take you on. Amen. Amen. And you remind him sometimes, I remind him sometimes, okay, Lord, I'm, you know, let's just take a vacation for a while. Let's take a break. I'm, you know, we've walked a long time here. Let's just back off a little bit. It's a little too much pressure. And then he'll say this. And he has made, he has set the world in their hearts. Look at this. So that no man can find out the work that God maketh from the beginning and the end. He set the, the, the world. I'm talking about the calling, the gifting in your heart is already there. Yeah. Yeah. You had nothing to do with it before you were even born. He already imagined you, pictured you, knew your name, knew who you were, knew your DNA, knew your tendencies, your, your propensities. He knew all of those things and he placed them in your heart. Deep in your heart. And they're hidden. They're hidden. And you as a king get to discover them Amen. and uncover them and uncover them. And he starts walking you through life and he starts walking you through life. I told this story at nine. I'll tell it again. I knew a guy that had a, came from a, a, had a son, a sports family, and had several sons. And the, the, several of the sons were sports, just big sports kids. Played football, basketball. The dad was a jock, played football. So all these other kids, they enjoy football practice and the games and Friday night football at high school and middle school and all that. It was a wonderful experience, except he had one son that just wasn't an athlete. And so the one son that was an athlete just wasn't, didn't kind of measure up. He always thought something might have been just kind of was not right with him. Because how, how was I born into a family of athletes and I can't throw a ball? So he had to just... This, he was discouraged all the time where he was comparing himself with all these other brothers, and it was celebrated because it was natural for his family to celebrate the athlete, but didn't know how to celebrate this, the, the music guy. He didn't know he even played music, but the kid had a, a knack for arts and music. So one day they were at a family reunion outside, a big family reunion, the kids were playing ball outside, and there was a, a, an uncle, a brother that was there, the, the dad, and he said, hey, he said, Come up to the kid, he goes, you know, I'm not an athlete either. And he, the little boy's just, he wasn't little, he was in middle school or late middle school, maybe even early high school. He said, I, I don't know how to, I'm not an athlete, man, I just can't really do it. I can't really, I had music on, and, and the, 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 the adult said to him, his uncle, it was his uncle, said to him, he said, hey, come on in. They walked in this little church, 
it was old piano that was sitting there, and the uncle said, you know, I never was much into sports either, so he starts playing the piano. He said, I don't know how to read music, but I've learned to play by ear. He said, I just, it just kind of came easy. He said, how about you? And the kid played a little bit, you know, and the uncle was showing him some things, and the kid, before you know it, in just a matter of moments, was just playing this piano like it was nothing. I mean, just a few lessons, just playing by ear, and they just were just, it was just in it. The dad comes in, the family comes in, comes in, and they see this kid, this boy, playing this piano. And they realize, man, he's got some serious musical talent, major musical talent. So the dad says, as much as I've been putting them through camps, I need to put him through music. See, that was hidden. It was hidden in his heart. But the honor of kings search out the matter. So the dad recognized, because he loved his son, that God gave him a gift that was not, not, not natural, it was supernatural. Yeah. And God placed it in his heart, and the kid began to learn how to play it. And then he began to learn how to play. The dad put the resources that he needed to equip that son, just like he was putting his son, other sons in the football camp. His dad at that point had to make a shift. This is because I don't know it. I have, but I do know my son, I love my son, even though I don't know and understand how all that works, this is natural for me. That's not natural for me. So even though I don't understand how that works, I've got to still put the resources because why? I love my son and he's worth it. Amen. Now the son starts to develop, and the mom and dad begin to develop an appreciation, so did the whole family, for the talent the kid had. Now the kid wasn't an outcast trying to fit in a family, the family just got broadened in its horizons. Now the family that God had placed all along, way before that child was even born, that family inside of them had DNA of music and art and entertainment. Why? Because it was in the uncle. If you go back generation to generation, somebody else had it before them. Why? Because God placed it in the heart of, and hidden in the heart of a man way before that family was even born. And it was hidden for them. And when the dad heard the music played by that son and the brothers heard how the son was playing that instrument, playing that, the piano, and he ended up playing all kinds of other instruments as well, but he ended up learning how to play that. When they heard that, it brought joy to them. It was beautiful in his time. Yeah. Next verse. I know that there is no good in the, If you try to discover for yourself... And compare yourself to other people of what they have and what he has, what she has. And you compare your weaknesses really compared to their strengths, you'll never measure up. And we get twisted in our mind and in our thinking because we try to convince ourselves, And then human thinking starts to try to replace the things of God and it'll never replace the things of God. I know there's no good in it, but for a man to rejoice and to do good in his life. Scripture says this. Kingdom of God is like a treasure that's hidden in a field. Hidden. And when it's hidden in a field, the man that finds the treasure, hidden, goes and sells all he has. And he comes back and buys the whole field. Because the treasure that was hidden is joy, is peace, is rest, is calm, fulfillment. We're living in a day-to-day where many people are trying to be many things. And we mimic, we copy, we clone, we try to do this, we try to do that, not realizing that God himself has placed a unique, hidden essence of who he is inside of each one of us. And the more we can get people comfortable with the hidden things that God has placed inside of them, as unique as it is, and we begin to uncover what that is and help uncover bring it out, whatever has been concealed, our job is to help it become revealed. And as a person begins, gets confidence, and, they, and, and it comes through travail. It doesn't happen just overnight. It comes through exercising it. It comes through working it. it comes, it's like a muscle, and you keep learning. And it's trial and error, and it's, it's not a perfect picture, but it, in its time, it will happen. Some of you in here tonight or this morning are looking to God to bring you some things in your life that are missing. You're looking for God to bring you some change and some transformation and all those things. But let me tell you, while all that transformation out there needs to happen, God is saying, look inside of yourself because I have placed inside of you a treasure that's hid in your field. And when you discover that treasure hid in your field, the whole world doesn't matter anymore. 
God is wanting a people to believe him for who he says he is. That looks at the written will that he has left us. Realizing that the written will has been spirited, written on our hearts. It was tables of stone in the Old Testament on rocks, but in the New Testament it's written on your heart. He hid it in there from the foundation of the world long before you even come to this earth. We've tried and we try and we try and we look at ourselves and say, I've made that mistake and I made this mistake and I've fouled up over here and I've failed over here and I've failed over here. And the Lord says, yeah, but you've travailed in all of your failures and all your mess ups and all your mistakes and all your trip ups and all your, your regrets and all those things are just exercising travail. Amen. Because if you keep searching and uncovering and uncovering and you stay in agreement with him that he's for you and not against you. That he's got working out all things together for your good, even though it don't even feel good sometimes. In its perfect time, it will be beautiful. And the discovery of him will be the discovery of who you are and who he is inside of you. And things will begin to change forever for you. Because your outlook on life begins to go, I got this. I see this. And I, all my regrets and my shame and my condemnation wasn't because you were bad. It was because you were travailing and trying to find what was good inside of you. And God said, I have this for you. The road is becoming more clear. The message is becoming tighter and more palatable, but more potent. Kids are getting it. Adults are realizing what's fluff and what's power. You're getting it. You're living in the best time to be alive. Things are going to open up for you in ways that you would have never been able to do on your own. Roll off the shame, roll off the condemnation, roll off the pressure, and let God reveal to you those things he has hidden for you. Would you stand with me? I want to pray for you this morning. As we work into the summer and move into the summer and all kinds of different changes are going to take place and people getting back to, into some sort of rhythm of life and rhythm of culture, I just want to encourage you, those of you that you have friends and family that are still having a hard time mobilizing, I want you to call them, encourage them to mobilize, get moving again. Why? Because we've got to travail, we've got to exercise, and we've got to get moving. And I'm not talking about exercising, just in exercise and health. I'm talking about moving in our faith. Because we've got a window of opportunity the Lord has allowed us for a generation of young people that will grow up in a way that we didn't have to grow up, in a way that will know Him in the fullness of who He is. A generation that's grown up with technology and information at our fingertips, but it's all things are being reinvented right now. And what we don't want to do is be an imitator, an echo. We want us to be a, the church to be a voice, a leader, a change agent, a catalyst for the ushering in of God's kingdom. Why? So the world will know that a treasure was hid in a field. In Huntington, there's a treasure that's hid in the city of Huntington. It's unique, and his essence has placed it there for years and years and years and years. In Cabell County, in West Virginia, in in Ohio, every city, every state, every domain has something hidden inside of them. And our responsibility that live here is to search out the matter so the world will see God is who he says he is. And in its time, it'll be beautiful. Father, I thank you for the word of God. I thank you for your will. I thank you for your testament. I thank you, Lord, for the airship that you've given your church, your people, and I bless you. I thank you, Lord, for the people that are standing here today, the ones that are watching by way of internet, those that have been here this morning, those that will hear this from uh, across the world on television, whatever. I just pray, Lord, that everybody here will recognize that we're coming into agreement with your will. We're coming into agreement with you, knowing, God, that you have hidden things for us and you have not hidden things from us. Our exercise of our faith is to trust you when we don't see you. We're moving in a way, Lord, we've never moved before. We're excited about what you're doing. We recognize the world and the landscape of society and culture has changed, but you've left us here to be the agent of that change. Let your word be established. Let your power be real. Let your power and potency of your word be experienced. Let it not be something we have to argue about. Let it be something that's been seen, experienced, and touched and taste. That the world will see that you are good and your mercy endures forever. In Jesus' name, and everybody said amen, amen, amen. God bless you all. We'll see you all Wednesday night. Dismissal will be right out there to your left.